So as many of you know, President Donald Trump was interviewed by George Snuffleupagus, combination of Stepanopoulos and Snuffleupagus, I think I just created, but nonetheless, he was interviewed by ABC News, and um, it was incredibly interesting. I found it fascinating and entertaining. Was it of any value to us as voters? No, I don't really feel like watching this gave me information that, you know, would help me make a more informed decision at the voting booth. But with that being said, with every single long form Donald Trump interview, like a train wreck, you've got to watch. Because even if, you know, you might feel a little bit dumber coming away from it, at least you know you're entertained. And this interview was no different. So I'm going to share my favorite moments from this interview because there were a lot. My first, um, not necessarily my favorite moment, but one thing that really stood out to me is when Donald Trump said this. I like the truth. You know, I'm actually a very honest guy. You know, I'm actually a very honest guy. <laughs> <laughs> You've literally lied more than 10,000 times since you became president. 10,000 times. And I love how, as he's saying it, even he knows that it's hard to believe because he states, oh, you know, I actually like the truth. He has to throw in actually because he knows that it's so surprising to everyone given that he lies approximately 30 times a day. Literally. Now, moving on, we got to a discussion about 2020 and polls came up. And as many of you know, Donald Trump isn't performing too well. Now, these are all early polls, but when you look at general election matchups, Trump v. Biden, Bernie v. Trump, Trump is getting whooped. Now, George Stephanopoulos, Snuffleupagus, asked him about this, and his response was just bizarre. This is a guy who does everything to separate and frighten people. It was fun. I mean, it's a political speech. He's still leading the polls on the Democratic side. It's tightening up a little bit. And it's oh, tightening up a lot, which is interesting. But he's still beating you, according to the polls. Well, I don't believe those polls. There's no way he beats me in Texas. But even your own polls show you're behind right now, don't they? No. My polls show that I'm winning everywhere. I don't know. We've, yeah. we've all seen these reports that 15 out of 17 states, you spent $2 million on a poll and you're behind in 15 out of 17 states. Nobody showed you those polls because those polls don't exist, George. Those polls don't exist. But I just had a meeting with somebody that's a pollster and I'm winning everywhere. Wow. <laughs> Mr. President, I've seen these polls that show you're pretty far behind. No, you haven't seen these polls. Excuse me? You haven't seen these polls because they don't exist. Oh, okay. I mean, what do you even say to that? What do you say when you tell somebody something that you saw with your own eyes and then they say, no, don't believe your lying eyes? What do you even say to that? Now, this happened after this discussion came up. Uh, we're getting tremendous polls. Those poll results so irritating to the president that a few seconds later, he has to go off the record to call his campaign manager. Okay, so hold it off for a little while. Just call Brad on the phone. And I want to ask him that question, okay? Days later, we would get the internal Trump polling data confirmed by the campaign. It showed the president far behind in key battleground states earlier this spring. <laughs> yeah. So after confidently saying that he has, quote unquote, tremendous polls, which I love, um, turns out that what George said was confirmed. Their own internal polling data shows that he's kind of in trouble. But Donald Trump is a narcissist, so he can never admit to anything that makes him look bad. Now, what do you say? What, what's the, an honest response to that? If you still, you know, you, you don't want to admit that you're behind and you want to make yourself look good, what would you say? Something that would have been actually truthful and more believable was, look, these are very early polls, George, so you can't really put too much faith into what they say now, but just know that you can't count me out of this yet because polls can change. I was behind in the polls in head-to-head -head matchups in 2016 as well, and then that changed. I ended up winning. So you can say something like that, but what does he do? Well, he just denies that these polls exist when his own team had to confirm that. I mean, how embarrassing is this to Donald Trump?
So there wasn't much policy in this interview, but he did talk about healthcare. And what he said here was just incredibly bizarre and downright wrong. What is the big unfinished piece of business you're gonna say, this is what we're gonna get done? So we almost had healthcare done. Healthcare is a disaster, Obamacare, but we've managed it much better than they managed it. So we've made it serviceable, but it's not great. We're gonna produce phenomenal healthcare. And we already have the concept of the plan and it'll be much Could better. Tell people what the plan is. Yeah, well, we'll be announcing that in about two months, maybe less. After dismantling Obamacare, basically death by a thousand cuts, he says that they've made Obamacare more serviceable. In what way? You've just dismantled portions of it. There are 25 million people that are underinsured, 30 million that are not insured. How many millions of Americans lost insurance since you became president because of what you did to the Affordable Care Act? And what does he say? We're going to produce phenomenal health care, and we already have the concept of a plan, and it'll be much better health care. Okay, great. Well, can we see it? Oh, we'll unveil it in like two months, maybe sooner. In other words, you don't have a plan. You never had a plan. And anything that he's proposed or that the Republican Party has proposed polls less than 20%. Because all it does is basically take Obamacare and make it worse. But because Republicans did it, to them, it's inherently better because they did it. If Obama did it, bad. If Republicans did it, good. Now, let me remind you that the Affordable Care Act is a right-wing healthcare proposal. Romney implemented this. This was cooked up by the Heritage Foundation, so they have nothing. And the fact that he still is saying, oh, well, we're going to come up with something. Sure, Jan. Now, he had the right instinct coming into office. He said, we're going to do universal health care. Now, I have no idea what he meant by that, but he was hinting at a single payer type system. And he said, the government's going to pay for it, but it's going to be better. We're going to save money. Like, we all know the clip that I'm referring to. I don't even have to play it. But all it took was one meeting with Paul Ryan and Republicans, and they got him to flip his stance immediately. He asked, why can't we expand Medicare to everyone? And they got him to flip and be against the Affordable Care Act. I mean, he has absolutely no plan when it comes to health care. But moving on. So in this interview, they play a clip of Donald Trump supporters. And even if they support Trump and plan to vote for him again in 2020, one thing that they don't like was Donald Trump's mean tweets. They th think that it's, you know, just unnecessary and he needs to stop doing it. This was his response to that. What they're talking about, though, is you're calling people names, it's demeaning. Well, you know what? I'll bet they do like it. They may tell you that, but I'll bet they like it, you know? Uh, Mr. President, some of your supporters who support you, hence the word supporters, they say that they really would prefer that you don't do all of these mean tweets. No, they don't. They like them. I mean, what do you say to that? It'd be like if you went up to Ted Cruz and said, Hey, Ted, you know, I just want to let you know that... You have a tonsil stone on your bottom lip. It's kind of embarrassing. And he just said, no, I don't. I mean, this is his response to everything. Tell him something that he doesn't like. And he just denies it. Unbelievable. Um, so I want to get to the next portion of the interview. So they're talking about tax returns and financial disclosures. And he hasn't released them yet. And he won't willfully do that. But listen to what he says about it. Because this is so fucking weird that it's honestly impressive. When you will see my financial statement at some point, I assume it's going to be released, you'll be very impressed with the job I've done. Much, much bigger, much, Which much better than statement? anybody. Uh, they're after my financial statement. The Senate, they'd like to get my financial statement. At some point, I hope they get it. You're going to turn it over? No, at some point, I might. But at some point, I hope they get it because it's, <laughs> it's a fantastic financial statement. <laughs> what does he even mean? When he says things like this, it's a fantastic financial statement. Very big numbers. You're going to see big numbers. Trump, what are you talking about? And my favorite part, <laughs> when he talks about his financial statements, George Stephanopoulos says, which financial statement? Trump then follows up by saying, they're after my financial statement. The Senate, they're after my financial statement. Oh, that definitely clears it up. In response to the question, <laughs> which financial statement? He says, my financial statement. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> His 
brain is melting. And believe it or not, that's not even the best part of that exchange. Because somebody coughed <laughs> as he was bloviating about his financial statement and how we'd all love it if we saw it, which she doesn't want us to see. But somebody coughed, totally threw him off of his game, and it seemed like he was just kind of being playfully, like, you know, irritated. But towards the end, you'll see he was legitimately angered that somebody coughed and interrupted him. It's a fantastic financial statement. And uh, let's do that over. He's coughing in the middle of my answer. Yeah, okay. I don't like that, you know? I don't like your chief of staff. If you're going to cough, please yeah, leave the room. Get a shot of, and I'll, yeah. I'll come over here. Just, just can't, you. you just can't. Just to change the shot. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Trump. Okay, do you want to do that a little differently then? Yeah, or? we just changed the angle. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So at some point, so at some point, I look forward to... Oh, did you see the death glare? <laughs> that death glare at the end there. Oh, that was so good. That was so good. Wow. All right, so moving on. They get into, you know, 2016, Russian interference, the Trump Tower meeting with Don Jr., and... He was asked whether or not, hypothetically speaking, a foreign government said, hey, Trump, we've got dirt on your opponent, and would you like us to give you that to potentially help you out? This is his actual response. Your campaign this time around, if foreigners, if Russia, if China, if someone else offers you information on an opponent, should they accept it or should they call the FBI? I think maybe you do both. I think you might want to listen. I don't, there's nothing wrong with listening. If somebody called, from a country, Norway, we have information on your opponent. Oh, I think I'd want to hear it. You want that kind of interference in our elections? It's not an interference. They have information. I think I'd take it. You literally were just under investigation for two years. So wouldn't you just instinctively say, we're not going down that route again. You know, I'm not going to do anything that could possibly be even perceived or seem like I am willing to accept help from a foreign government. Wouldn't you think that his instinct would be to just lie about that like he does about everything else, even if truthfully he would accept that knowledge and not contact the FBI? I mean, look, one thing that I think is certain that comes across in this interview is that Donald Trump's mental capacity is rapidly declining. Like when you compare this interview and current interviews, recent interviews with anything he did in 2016, he was able to form more coherent thoughts. He was still, you know, weird and he'd go on these weird rants and whatnot. But compare 2016 to now, the things he says, you know, they're just weird. And I'm not necessarily only referring to his response on, you know, election interference, just in general. But in the event, you know, you were asked this question, what's the right answer? You would say, of course I would reject any help from a foreign government, and I would immediately report that to the FBI, but I'd go a step further, and I would vow to never interfere in another country's elections, as the United States always does. I'm against interference both ways, when we do it and when other countries do it. That'd be the correct answer. Donald Trump just can't help himself, though. Wow. So, with that being said, I just want you all to realize that we may never get a president this dumb ever again. Like, this could be, you know, the only time in our lifetimes where we see a president this stupid. I mean, for everyone who said that George W. Bush was stupid, Donald Trump makes him look like Einstein. And that's not to say that George W. Bush is more moral than Donald Trump, because I think he's actually more destructive than Donald Trump by a mile and a half. With that being said, he's a lot more intelligent than Donald Trump, and it's clear that he struggles to string together a coherent thought, and what often comes out is just this word salad that ends up being the same like five talking points over and over again. Witch hunt, no collusion, polls, uh, I beat Hillary Clinton, you know, the same shit over and over again. I don't, I can't think of the fifth one, but maybe it's four. But with that being said, Jesus Christ, um, that was entertaining. Um, I'm glad I watched it. Didn't learn anything. Probably uh, I'm a little bit dumber because of it. But with that being said, I'm glad I watched that. 
Mike is a total loser. So don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.